Hello and good evening. Apologies for the delay. Thank you for staying um, with us. My name is Fabio Gigi. I'm the chair of the Japan Research Center here at SOAS. And it is exactly two years ago since we hosted Professor Yasuko Kameyama here for a talk. Uh, it was a big SOAS-wide meeting uh, in preparation of the COP26, if you remember that event in Glasgow. And it was very eye-opening in many ways because we brought together many different experts from all over the world. And one of the points that she really brought home was that because there is quite a lot of annual fluctuation in terms of typhoons, in terms of rainfall, in terms of flooding in Japan, she said people don't really make the link to climate change at all. So not it, it doesn't really feature uh, in the press. Uh, it doesn't really feature um, in popular discourse all that much. But that was two years ago. And now, two years later, we find ourselves in a very different context. If, you remember, if you've been to Japan this year, you have noticed there is hardly any rainy season at all. Uh, water levels are dangerously low. And I've just come back uh, uh, 10 days, uh, uh, roughly two weeks ago, and uh, it was 35 degrees in Tokyo at the end of September. So there's clearly something happening uh, that we need to take account of. Now, our speaker tonight is uniquely placed to respond to all of your questions. Uh, Mr. Naomi Hirose um, received his BA uh, in sociology from Hitotsubashi University in 1976 and his MBA from Yale School of Management in 1983. And he has left his mark on the energy sector in Japan, where he worked for 40 years at the Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO. Now, immediately after the 311 Fukushima accident, Mr. Hidose dedicated himself to create the system for nuclear damage compensation. After becoming president and CEO in 2012, he led the company in addressing a number of highly complex issues, such as water management and decommissioning plans for the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, compensation for those who were affected by the accident, and the revitalization of Fukushima. And of course, keeping TEPCO competitive while facing the deregulation of Japan's electricity and gas market. He left TEPCO in 2021 and currently serves as the chair of the Japan Energy Association, uh, a member of the J World Energy Council. Um, and also he has been appointed in 2022 as the vice chair of the World Energy Council, who as an organization has just in 2023, um, it was the 100th anniversary. It was founded in 1990, uh, 1923 and is a, UN accredited non-governmental body that uh, is sort of meeting regularly to discuss um, the world state um, of the energy sector. So tonight we'll follow a traditional academic format with the lecture first and ample opportunity to comment and ask questions afterwards. Thank you also for those who are joining us online who have stuck with us through the technical difficulties. Please put your questions into the Q&A. The talk tonight bears the title a Green Transformation in Japan and Future Policies Against Climate Change in the Energy Sector. Now, please join me in welcoming Mr. Naomi Hirose to the JRC. Well, thank you, Fabio, for your kind introduction. Um, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Naomi Hirose. As, as Fabio introduced me, I just became vice chair of World Energy Council, which is based in London. That's why I'm here to uh, participate in one of the uh, World Energy Council's uh, official, uh, of, officers meeting uh, the, day, the day before yesterday. As, 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 as Fabio uh, explained, TEPCO had a very, very severe nuclear accident in Fukushima back in 2011. The, the impact of the, uh, the accident was very, very, very large, not only in Japan, but also in the rest of the world. 
and uh, some countries stopped nuclear operation after the accident. And consequently, my uh, last 10 years of my career at TEPCO were very, very difficult in terms of the management of the company. But also, at the same time, I have learned a lot from the accident, and then I have experienced a lot since the accident. So I think I started believing that it is my responsibility to share these lessons and then experiences uh, with as many people as possible in the world, not only the people in the nuclear uh, sector, but also uh, all the people. And so in that sense, it is my great pleasure and an honor to be here at SOURCE uh, tonight. And uh, uh, so I would like to uh, explain uh, first the current situation and then how Japanese government uh, is trying to do. And then I'd like to evaluate the Japanese policy plan. And then lastly, I'd like to explain what I would do, what I, how I would cope with the very difficult problems such as global warming, energy transition, those things, okay? So let me let me start with a brief explanation of the uh, current situation of, of energy, particularly electric generation in Japan. Okay, okay, now, now, thank you. Well, this is a historical uh, power generation mixture by sources. Um, you know, the, the accident happened in 2011. Yeah, so before that, the nuclear generation accounted for about one third of the Japanese uh, power generation. And maybe LNG thermal power generation is one third and 15, 20% are from uh, coal thermal power generation and few percent from oil thermal power station, uh, power, power generation. And the, 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 the bottom is a hydroelectric power uh, generation, which, is account, which accounts for maybe 8% or so, less than 10%. So I would say that before the accident, uh, the, the, the generation mixture of Japan was relatively good because in terms of the you know, diversification of the energy resources. But after the accident, uh, we stopped all the nuclear power uh, plants. So the, 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 the mixture changed dramatically after 2011. And, but still people use electric power. So somebody, something have to be replace the vacancy of the uh, nuclear power generation. And the only way, only way to do that was uh, thermal power station. So we depended on, still depend on almost 80, 90% of our Japan's uh, power generation on thermal power station, thermal power generation. But uh, as you know, Japan doesn't have any indigenous uh, natural resources such as coal, gas, or, you know, oil. So all the fuel for the, new, for the thermal power station um, has to be imported from abroad. So uh, Japan's self-energy uh, sufficiency ratio uh, is currently now 10% or 11%, which is very, very vulnerable in terms of energy security. By the way, this figure 11% is the second from the bottom in among the OECD nations. OECD nations are developed countries. I think there are 30, 30, 38 countries now in OECD. So the Japan is uh, second from the bottom. And by the way, the, the, the least uh, self-sufficient country in OECD nations is Luxembourg. Well, Luxembourg is uh, it's a part of the US uh, European continent. I bet there are a lot of power line connections or pipelines to the neighboring countries. But Japan is an island. We do not have any 
power line or any pipeline connection to the neighboring countries. So 11% of the self-sufficiency ratio is, is very, very dangerous. And let, let's look at that uh, CO2 emissions. Because we stopped nuclear power generation and they replaced it by thermal power generation, the CO2 emission uh, inevitably increased very much. This slide illustrates the, the CO2 emission from power generation only. Not, not, not all that uh, CO2 emission from Japan. This is from just from the uh, power generation in Japan. As you see that the, from 2010 to 2011, 12, it jumped up because it, we, we started using thermal power generation a lot. And then the yellow line shows that uh, the, the unit uh, CO2 emission for every one kilowatt hour uh, generated. And our goal before the accident was 0 0.37. But now it's the four point zero point four or five something like that. It's, it's not very very good situation in terms of the uh, CO two reduction or in terms of the energy security. And so please keep this uh, current situation in in your mind. Then under these conditions, Japanese government declared to to realize net zero society by 2050. Uh, this is uh, not my intention, sorry. Um, and then as an interim uh, target, uh, we are going to reduce uh, CO2 emission by 46% by 2030. And uh, currently uh, Japan's CO2 emission totally uh, it's about 1 billion tons. So uh, this is our goal. In order to realize this, uh, this very lofty goal, uh, Japanese government uh, just issued a policy plan for green transformation. And uh, uh, Lower side is uh, electric sec electric generation sec sector. Upper side is no, no electric. And then lower side says that uh, we are going to expand renewable generation as much as possible and then position it as a main source of power generation. And then we start nuclear power and we reduce the thermal power generation. And then also we are going to use a more hydrogen, ammonia. And then a non-electric sector, uh, energy savings, and then also we are going to build a uh, hydrogen society. And in a uh, uh, longer range, uh, max, we, we maximize the, the renewable power and our next generation uh, of the nuclear power. And hydrogen, ammonia, and the CCUS, as you know, carbon capture usage and then storage and carbon recycle and then electrification and hydrogen, ammonia, and DAX, uh, DAX is a direct air capture of the carbon uh, and usage. And BEX is a bioenergy carbon capture and storage. So those are the new technologies we are going to uh, develop this technology. And by doing so, uh, we are going to realize uh, net zero society by 2050. But um, this is a policy plan written by Japanese bureaucrats. So, so it's not very quantitative. There aren't many numbers, very, very policy oriented things. I would say among these uh, policies listed here, the most difficult task for Japan is that uh, uh, expansion of the renewable power and then position it as a main source of uh, power generation. Uh, because it, now the proportion of the renewable uh, generation is about 20%. And among them, 8% is hydroelectric power and then 12 
percent is from mostly from solar power and some from wind power. But uh, as you see before, you know, this is this is hydroelectric electric. As you see that the, it stays the same, it means that the, there aren't many possible places to develop hydropower anymore. So it means that we have to uh, develop solar power or wind power, maybe geo geothermal or something. But um, uh, solar power has been increased very, very much. You see a lot of solar panel on the roof of the uh, houses now. But that, again, that there aren't many possible uh, sites because it, Japan is, you know, mountainous. Uh, country, there aren't many, you know, flat land, so um, it's not uh, easy to to expand uh, solar power generation very very much. So that people expect wind power very much now, uh, and particularly the Japan is surrounded by the oceans. Uh, you know, a lot of hopes uh, for offshore wind power, and but. Um, Japanese uh, seabeds uh, sand in Japan is not, uh, not like uh, European uh, no Sea or Baltic Sea. Uh, Japan's seabed is very deep, very steep and then deep. So it's really difficult to build, you know, basement of the solar, I mean, a wind power. So now we are trying to uh, install off floating offshore wind power, so floating, but it's again it's it's a uh, it's not easy to develop. First of all, it's very difficult to uh, construct uh, basement of the floating solar power. I mean, a floating wind power, and then maintenance of that is also very very difficult. So I would say that because of the Japanese government. Uh, you know, trying to develop uh, renewable power very, very much. And then it should be, but it's not that easy. And then also the other difficult part is uh, part is uh, hydrogen. As you know, the hydrogen is a product. It's not natural resources. Even if you dig a hole, you wouldn't see that uh, you know, hydrogen you know, comes out. So we have to we have to produce hydrogen. So it's uh, you know the green hydrogen. There are several different hydrogen: green hydrogen or pink hydrogen, which is produced by nuclear power, and then gray hydrogen is, is uh, produced by uh, fossil fuel. You know, and then Japan. If Japan um, sticks to green hydrogen, it should be. Uh, you know, as I we. Green hydrogen has to be generated, created by uh, green uh, electric power, such as solar, wind, or nuclear. Uh, and then, as I said, that the, the expansion of a renewable power is not easy. So it's it's very difficult to create, uh, to, to produce a green hydrogen in Japan. So probably the realistic way to have a green hydrogen in Japan is import green hydrogen from maybe Australia or Middle East, where that, uh, that a lot of desert uh, vacant uh, lands, so they could they could put they could install as many as possible the solar panels and then generate electricity there, and then use produce hydrogen green hydrogen there, and then ship it to to Japan. It's possible, although it's very costly. And then if we do that, if we import uh, high, green hydrogen from foreign countries, that wouldn't improve uh, energy sufficiency of Japan. It's just a mere replacement of the uh, LNG or coal or oil. So, um, so I would say this policy plan is very ambitious, but it's very challenging. So let me let me explain what I would do. 
I have many opportunity to participate in an international conference on global warming or energy transition or, or, or you know, and where I often feel that uh, many of the participants uh, tend to focus on supply side uh, issue, supply side initiatives such as when to stop coal fired thermal power station, how to increase renewable power, how to create hydrogen supply chain and such. But I say, I think that the uh, demand side initiative are also very, very important to, 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 you know, to, first of all, to have the uh, efficient uh, economy. Let me explain how to do that. Um, this is a, this is a very sketchy uh, illustration, but uh, it says that the CO2 emissions can be calculated by GDP times energy efficiency times a carbon intensity. Right? When, we, when we are active, we consume some energy. And when energy is consumed, CO2 is generated usually. So in order to have a net zero CO2 emission, we should not engage in any activities, right? But it, it, it can be possible. So uh, in order to reduce CO2 emissions, uh, we have to, as this equation clearly shows, we have to improve energy efficiency and reduce carbon intensity while maintaining uh, economic growth. So let me explain how to improve energy efficiency. I would say that the, the fastest way, easiest way to, in, to, in, to improve energy efficiency is electrification. Make, try to make everything uh, by electric power. For example, if you convert your petrol engine automobile to electric vehicle, you, the, the total um, energy consumption will decrease to one half or even to one third because that the electric motor will um, rotate, turn the wheels much, much more efficiently than internal combustion engine. The other way is stop burning fossil fuel and then use heat pump system for the heating or cooling or hot water supply. And because of the electric uh, heat pump system is so uh, efficient that you could um, uh, reduce the CO, uh, energy consumption very much. And by doing these things for the promotion of electricity on demand side, on the supply side, we have to we have to generate increased amount of energy electric power consumption due to electrification with non fossil fuels such as solar power, wind power, and nuclear power. Okay. By the way, we we are you know we are using electric power very much in our daily lives, right? Do you know how much we depend on electric power? Eighty-five percent, maybe half, something like that. Okay. In in case of Japan, left hand side, this is the energy total energy consumption of Japan. Twelve. We only dependent depend on electric power. 26%. And the rest of the more than 70% is a direct com combustion of the fossil fuel, like gasoline or oil or you know, coal. It's, is that surprising? Because it, uh, we feel that uh, our lives can be nothing without ele electricity, but it, the, it only depending on 26% on electric power. 
But uh, this number 26 is relatively high in the world. For example, in the UK, this is uh, about 20%. In the US, it's similar. And so the, the fact that uh, Japan depends on uh, only 26% on, on electric power means that there is a lot of room for the further electrification, right? Okay. And let me let me explain the very, very hypothetical optimistic scenario with uh, maximum electrification. Everything can be done is electrified. So all the electric, all the vehicles should be electric vehicle, and then all the houses and then uh, buildings are all electric by. And under that scenario, by 2050, um, electric portion will go up uh, from 26% to 70% if that's happened. But that I want you to draw your attention to is the total amount of energy consumption, A. You see a lot of reduction. It's like a magic trick. No, the more you use electric power, of course, the electric power consumption itself goes up, of course, because we, we use electric power. But the total energy consumption will be almost half. Yes, so electrification uh, will reduce energy consumption very much. And then at the same time, if we generate this increased amount of electric consumption with uh, non-fossil fuel, such as solar, wind, and nuclear, as much as possible, uh, the amount of CO2 emission will reduce by 80%. Of course, this is very hypothetical, you know, optimistic scenario. It's, it's very difficult to convert all the houses or all the buildings to all electrified and then all of your vehicle to electric vehicles. But uh, I'm sure that you understand the potential of this uh, electrification would provide uh, in terms of the CO2 reduction or uh, reduction of the energy consumption. So I would say that the best way, and then this is a this is a key uh, to 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 reduce uh, energy consumption and then reduce CO2 emission is. Electrification on demand side. At the same time, decarbonization of supply side. I think this is the answer. Okay, so let me let me um, explain now the, the potential of the uh, energy saving and then CO two emissions uh, in both UK and then Japan uh, with some numbers. Uh, this is a. Uh, CO2 emissions from transportation. Take a look at the uh, pie chart, left-hand side. Um, this, this red one, 17.4% of CO2 emissions uh, comes from transportation sector in Japan. And 80% of which comes from automobile of, of that of the, the, there are many various kind of the automobiles, but the automobiles, including passenger car or heavy duty cars or buses or something. So the the total, if we could convert um, all the vehicles to electric vehicle, the potential of the CO2 to reduction is very very large in Japan. Now take a look at the UK, it's similar, but the. the Proportion of the UK, 31.7% comes from uh, transportation sector, and of which 90% of which uh, is, comes from automobile of some kinds. So this is a big potential. 
let me compare the electric vehicles and then conventional petrol engine uh, vehicle. You know, right hand side, Honda Fit is a very, very fuel efficient compact car. It lands 16 kilometer per liter of gasoline. On the other hand, the, the, the comp, you know, compatible uh, size of the electric vehicle is the Honda E, uh, which lands 5.5 kilometer for every one kilowatt hour consumption. But let's compare the, the energy uh, consumption of two cars. Fit consume 2,082 kilojoule for every one kilometer driven. But Honda E consume 659 kilojoule for the every one kilometer driven. It's, it's, it's three times. This is a big difference. So you know, now Fit is very, very efficient car, but still uh, if you convert it to the uh, small uh, electric vehicle, you could save a lot of energy and then you could reduce a lot of CO2 emissions. So next thing is uh, heat demand. Um, in UK, 47.2% um, of the total energy is for heat. And in Japan, it's similar. 50.7% of the total energy consumption is for heat producing. Heat demand, where I mean is uh, energy it is used for heating, maybe cooking, and hot water supply, cooling, and uh, th those are the, the household or buildings. But in, in the industry, in factories, they uh, heat demand is for steam or high temperature uh, process like molding or those things, and uh, you know that kind of demand accounts for almost half of the total energy consumption in both country. It's a very, very large portion is for heat. And I don't know the, the, the figure in UK, but in Japan, among that 38%, so three quarter of the heat demand is the, temp, is the heat uh, temperature its temperature is less than 200 degrees Celsius. And because of the heat pump system, I can produce heat very, very efficiently. And then conventional electric heater is not good at producing high temperature heat. You know, electric heater is not just uh, energy efficient. But at recently, technology of the heat pumps has advanced very much. And uh, now the heat with the temperature of less than 200 degrees Celsius can be produced with heat pump system much more efficiently than combustion of burning the fuels, a coal or gas or. By the way, do you, do you know heat pump system mechanism of the heat pump system? No, yes, that, that's why I prepared. Uh, heat pump system is, uh, uh, as it's called, pump up the heat in the air. There, the heat exists in the air, no matter how cold it is. And then take it out and then bring it to inside the room and then release it. That, that's a heat pump system. But heat pump, pump systems utilize two major characteristics of the heat. One is uh, heat moves from hotter place to colder place. So if two, two, you know, two things put together, this is very hot and this is not cold. Heat moves from 
hotter place to lower place. And then uh, and then eventually the temperature of those two would be equal, right? So this is going to be colder and then this is going to be hotter. And then and the other characteristics is uh, when you pressurize the air, the temperature of the air goes up. And then if you depressurize the air, the temperature goes down. This, this using these two characteristics of the heat, heat pump, first of all, observe the heat in the outside into the refrigerant. And then so the refrigerant went gets a little bit warmer because it absorbs the heat from the outside. Then pressurized by compressor so that uh, the that temperature of the refrigerant goes up, getting very hot. Then release that heat inside the room so that uh, the refrigerant, temperature of the refrigerant goes down because they release the heat. Then a little bit cooling, cooler refrigerant goes through the expansion valve and depressurize. And then the temperature of the refrigerant goes down further. So here, the temperature of the refrigerant is very cold, colder than the air. So that the, temp the heat in, in the air will move from here to the refrigerant. This this just repeat this cycle, and this illustration shows that uh, when we heat up the room. But if you would like to cool, uh, you know, air condition the, the inside, just rotate opposite way. Take the heat out of, of from the room, and then release it in outside, so that the room temperature goes down. Okay. This is a this is a uh, heat pump system, and then heat pump system. The performance of the heat pump system is expressed in terms of COP, a coefficient of performance. In this heat pump, they will this will take six heat, six energy from outside, and only part that energy is consumed is compressor using electric power. And produce seven heat in, into, the, into the room. So the efficiency is 700%, seven times. Isn't that amazing? If you burn the, whatever the fossil fuel, gas or coal or you know, oil, no matter how efficient that heating system is, you wouldn't get more than 100% of the heat, right? But this is a kind of magical equipment, which, you know, <laughs> produce more. And then, so this case, this heat pump is COP7. Isn't that amazing? So uh, using this heat pump, uh, could realize that, that a lot of the reduction of energy uh, and then also CO2 emissions. And heat pump system is beginning to uh, attract a lot of attention, particularly in Europe. In 2007, EU directive uh, certified heat pump system is uh, renewable energy because that they use that the heat from the air natural uh, you know, uh, resources. And because at the last year, the Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, you know, made all the world uh, very, very anxious. And then the price of the uh, energy just went up very, very sharply. And I, I uh, International Energy Agency released special report, Future of Heat Pumps where it says that the, a heat pump is a, is a very important solution to both um, you know, energy security and at the same time, climate change. 
So this is, uh, everybody is watching heat pump system very much. And heat pump technology is not a new, new technology at all by any means. But the Japanese companies are leading the world in technology of the heat pump system, particularly Daikin as a Japanese uh, heat pump manufacturer is leading uh, technology uh, that cultivated over the years. And Daikin's uh, air conditioner, I mean, uh, heating system, our uh, hot water heating system can produce 70 degree hot water even if the outside temperature is minus 15. Isn't that amazing? So as I said, that even if it's at minus 15 outside, some heat exists in that air. So take that air out and then make it seven times or I don't know, six times, and then put it in, 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 the, in the room or to, to make hot water so that the uh, daiking uh, can produce this uh, hot water, even in a cold, very cold Europe in winter. And Daikin's projection, uh, the heat pump heating uh, equipment will increase uh, more than you know, 10 times, tenfold from 2020 to 2030. And uh, expected to account for more than half of the European uh, heating market. Mm -hmm. And then even in the UK, UK government uh, you know, established the investment strategy. And then here yeah, the, the UK government also see that the heat pump system uh, will be much, much more popular in, in coming years. So please keep I open on heat pump system. It'll be a big, big hit. So stop burning you know, fossil fuel for, for heating or hot water system. And then as I said, a heat pump system can use for cooling. So the, the Europe, summer of Europe is very hot. So you, someday you will need uh, you know, air conditioner in summer. So in that case, this system is very, very useful. So this is the heat pump system. So as, as I said, at the electric vehicle and heat pump system, those are the two major pillars uh, of the electrification. So that promotes these two technologies very much so that we could reduce uh, energy consumption very much. And let me, let me, lastly, let me, just briefly touched upon the, the, the supply side issue, which is the nuclear development, nuclear operation uh, in Japan. There were 54 nuclear units at the time of Fukushima accident, 13 years ago. Among them, only 12 nuclear power units have restarted operation. You know, 54 units stopped, all the 54 units stopped operation right after the accident. But only two, 12 have restarted uh, operation in the past 12 and a half years. And 21 units were given up to restart and now in the decommissioning process. And that, so it's the Japanese, uh, Japanese public has shown, keeps showing the, the very, very negative uh, reaction to the nuclear power generation for the past 12 years. However, <clears throat> Russian invasion of Ukraine raised electric price very much, and then also made Japanese public very much worried about stable supply of energy, particularly electric power. I was shocked when I saw this uh, number. This is, a, this is a result of the public 
uh, poll. Uh, being asked, asked, do you agree or disagree the restart of nuclear power and uh, nuclear power unit that meets new regulatory standard? 58% of the respondent said, yes, let's restart nuclear power. This is amazing, astonishing figure because it, uh, this is a different source, but uh, the results are similar. Uh, this is historical, it's the same question and same, you know, it's been for many years after the uh, Fukushima accident, Japanese uh, people are, were very negative to restart the, the uh, electric and nuclear power units, which stopped right after the uh, accident. But it suddenly changed last year. And the Japanese government sees this opportunity of the changes in the public poll. And then Japanese government started uh, advocating the use of a nuclear energy. And even started saying that uh, we are going to develop the new technologies of nuclear power, such as small module reactors and high temperature gas reactors. And then uh, Japanese, policy, Japanese public opinion uh, still keep that this favorable uh, view on this uh, Japanese government policy change. So I would say this is a, uh, for the first time after the Fukushima accident, the Japanese people changed uh, their stance uh, toward nuclear power generation dramatically. So hopefully with this support, uh, we are going to restart more nuclear units. As, uh, as, as it says, there are many, many uh, nuclear power plants are waiting for we start. So hopefully they will start that soon. And uh, uh, this is this is my uh, talk today. And then um, as 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 we are going to as we are you know trying to uh, realize net zero society by twenty fifty. So we have to do everything. We have to you know, so. We have to um, do a lot of R and D uh, for the new technologies such as hydrogen or carbon capture, uh, storage or direct air capture of the carbon. Those things, but uh, these new technology to develop the, these new technologies takes some time, some many years, and then there are a lot of risks. Uh, that, that everything, things are not going well according to the scenario. But uh, the technology that I explained today are all, oops, all available now. So why not, why don't we start doing that? Of course, while we are, uh, Doing a lot of R and D for the new, 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 new technology, but on the other hand, we don't have to wait. And we can we can convert your automobile to electric vehicle now today, and then you can change your uh, hot water system to heat heat pump system today. So that the, that's what we can we should do right now and then that has a very large potential to reduce co2 emission okay thank you very much thank you very much um much food for thought there i'm sure you have loads of questions i just wanted to start us off uh because I'm from Switzerland, where heat pump technology is actually uh, is 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 quite widely used, especially in new buildings. Mm -hmm. And I recently talked to a friend, uh, a Chinese friend from Harbin, who said, "Oh yeah, no, we also have um, 
heat pump technology, uh, but everybody hates it. And I asked him why. And he said, because outside it's minus 15 degrees and inside is 32 degrees and there's no way to turn down the heat. The whole building is heated to the exact same temperature. And so it, for, for him, it was it was more of a question of the collectivist solution versus a more sort of individualized um, mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of the size of the heat pump. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it must have been a very huge, <laughs> massive thing, as you can imagine. Um, so I wanted to ask you uh, to start us off. Um, most of the solution that you propose, uh, uh, very powerful um, ideas, but the, most of them are um, technological solutions. And I wanted to uh, know how much emphasis would you put on behavioral change in this context? Well, yes, um, it's a good question because, as I said, at the, I, when when I participate in international conference on global warming, people tend to uh, talk about the supply side issue, and the media also uh, reports uh, supply side issue a lot, so that uh, um, people, you know, so that. Uh, this, oh, this is global warming is a supply side issue. Mm -hmm. It's not our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And but if you use energy as much as you want and put all the responsibility to supply side to 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 protect uh to, to, to prevent uh, energy shortage and to reduce CO2 emissions, it's it makes difficult question to solve more difficult. Right. So I think that uh, we have to uh, we have to educate people. And you can do this today, right? And so that uh, people start um, understand. Uh, oh, this is there is some room for for us for, as an energy users or consumer of the energy to do right now. So I think that that kind of education is also very important, but the media tend to you know focus on the uh, flood or you know wild fire, mountain mm -hmm. fire, and, and those things, right? Right. So um, of course that that could shock the, the consumers of energy. We have to do something by ourselves, but sometimes the the media, you know. Put uh, the older responsibility to supply side right. or stop coal fire from a power station, those kinds. So I, I think that uh, that's why I'm keep telling this kind of story uh, wherever the uh, an op op opportunity I have. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, questions in the room, please. Thank you. Lots of color. Two questions. Sure. Yes. Um, um, I was in uh, Fukushima four years ago, <laughs> and I, I could see the line. Uh, a good friend from the uni took me around to the new uh, center, information center for earthquakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we could see on the, on the way long lines of tracks carrying contaminated soil from near Fukushima to go and bar it or to be processed or whatever. In other words, after a few years, or many years of the disaster, the, the issue to how to deal with the legacy. And now it contradicts with what you said uh, kindly that 58% have changed their yeah, mind. Yeah. So in other words, the need makes it. So I want to mm. ask you about this, that the change in uh, perceptions, it's work of governments perhaps in this case and lobbies. That's number one. Number two, um, the green uh, hydrogen. Do you see a clash because in Japan it imported from the Middle East? Saudi Arabia, and now we have COP28 in, mm -hmm. in the Emirates. In this case, do you see this one as a kind of a bridge between the conflict between the International uh, Energy uh, Agency in Paris and OPEC Plus and mm -hmm. pushing the net zero from 2050 to 2060? That's my question. Okay. Thank, okay. Thank you very much. The first question uh, is that. Uh, Actually, I don't know why the people change their minds so dramatically. No, because at the, <clears throat> after the accident, I'm the one who explained to the Japanese people how much we learned from the accident, 
how you know safety measure we introduce after the lesson you know learning lesson from the accident and how stringent the new safety uh, standard uh, is to the to, to the public people but uh, as you see that they, it didn't change at all but well i don't know well thanks to mr putin first of all um so they probably um yeah because it, um, the electric price went up very sharply last year and that's uh, that's for sure one thing and um uh, on tv uh, not this year but last year um it is kept saying that uh, save energy, save electric power, because that we are running out of the uh, electric and fuels. So people realize that, uh, but still, I was very much surprised by this change. So I do not know exactly what caused this, but uh, obviously because it happened last year and then this year, it must be that uh, the price and then the, uh, stable supply of uh, electric power. And the second question, <clears throat> yes, uh, that's also a very good question. But, um, um, well, actually, um, the, the organization, which now very much uh, uh, working for the hydrogen is the uh, oil industry gas industry so they they made money a lot of money last year this year and they know that uh, their future is not very bright because they are fossil fuel companies with a lot of money so that the, they are spending a lot of money for hydrogen development so i don't know what your question really means, but uh, um, again, um, it could be a replacement of fossil fuel uh, by hydrogen. And then of course, it, the, the best thing is that uh, hydrogen doesn't emit CO2 emissions. So it's a good thing. But um, as I said, at, uh, from, J from Japan's view, it wouldn't improve energy sufficiency. Thank you. There's another question. Yes. Thank you. That was incredibly interesting. Um, I, I I also have an interest in the more social aspect of the sure, so sure. I'm calling to kind of a follow up question. Uh, thinking about why we see what we see in the crowd, um, uh, clearly the war must have been a factor. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm also wondering whether the fact that, and, and this is by no means something that only Japan does, I think the UK does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The class of the nuclear power as a renewable, mm -hmm. as you did in, in your graphs. And, and I think that's very problematic for me, not just in, in ideological mm -hmm. terms of you know, what the power, the nuclear power stands for. Uh, but um, when it comes to nuclear power, we, we haven't solved the problem of what to do with waste. Mm -hmm. it, it's really hard to do. Yes. Yes. That's a very notorious thing. So I, I wonder when this classification started. Has it always been considered a renewable source? Has anything changed? I noticed it recently. So I'm wondering whether part of the problem in the way we talk about it is to do with you know this new label that we've attached to it as a renewable kind of source, um, which defies, I mean, you know, what, what I found interesting after Fukushima is that people learned that you could have a different lifestyle and uh -huh. still survive. You know, that the country did not come to a halt. People were doing, were living decently, um, and maybe you wouldn't have, you know, the lights on 24 hours a day, but you could still uh -huh. live. Uh -huh. And, you know, at which point that was forgotten, something that interests me. And I'm wondering whether it is really to do with the way people talk about these things. And of course, media is highly responsible for it, but also this new kind of classification system, if it is new at all. 
Right, but it is not perceived as being dangerous anymore. Well, yeah, that that's a, the exactly question that I have, you know, because at, uh, during these years, people are very much worried about the safety of the nuclear power plants. Um, Mr. Putin didn't change that, but the suddenly, it, you know, this is the result. So. I don't know. This is this is a matter of the you know social psychology, or it's not very scientific, maybe. But uh, yes, um, you know, nuclear waste is a big problem, as you as you just said, and we have to we have to do something. But uh, um, in Japan, we have we have used nuclear power for almost fifty years. So there is a lot of nuclear waste already. So we have to do something, definitely. I'm not saying that's why we can develop nuclear, uh, you know, energy further. But at, uh, that's for sure. We have to we have to do something nuclear uh, waste. But um, um, that's that's one thing. So, but you know, as I said, that uh, we can use. Uh, technology available now. So I think we better use that technology in order to wait for the, you know, many decades. I'm sorry, it's not, maybe it's not a very good answer to your question, but I, I think that's, that's just, I don't know why this happened exactly. I don't know. In Japan? No, 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 not at all. It's a totally different thing. Well, I don't because it, 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 you know, both do not emit CO two emission. Hmm. That's a, that's the same, but it, it, those are totally different technology, and renewable uh, is a you know natural power, so that. Uh, you can't control sunlight or wind. So whenever they generate electric power, generate. And then no matter how much we need the electric power, they sometimes they stop generating uh, generating power. So it's, it's a it's a natural you know things. But on the other hand, nuclear power is a technology. It's a generation method so we can control the, the power we can stop it we can start it I, so it's, it's i i don't think that uh, any japanese thinks that the both of them are you know renewable or uh, these things it's a totally different thing that's that's why this happened for many years people do not like nuclear but they like renewable very much. But suddenly, it, this happened. Thank you. Uh, there's two questions, and I'll, I'll come to you um, on, from the audience online. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for your presentation, says Ben Haringer. How might Japan's aging society impact its policies to reduce emissions? Do all the people really care about reducing carbon emissions? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Good question. I don't know. Well, but the, the you know Japanese people are relatively well educated, you know. So uh, we have uh, um, people read and then watch and you know news and every day. So I think that the um, the awareness of the uh, know green green transition or uh global warming is very high so i think i hope that the uh, elder elderly people uh you know don't care about <laughs> uh, energy problem or uh, global warming um because that uh, you know by by the time they will die, they die. Uh, you know, it's gonna. It wouldn't happen anything. 
so hope hope not so so i don't i don't see any any uh but the definitely younger people have more uh uh you know more uh how do you say uh They're more invested uh, yes in and yeah awareness mm -hmm. and then they had they they think that they have to do something um but uh i don't think any that big uh difference between ages right thank you yes there's another question Hi, thank you so much for a very educational um seminar talk i have two questions sure of course kind of practical uh -huh. <laughs> one is the uh, possibility of using the uh, geothermal energy uh -huh. uh, genetics Mm -hmm. Is is there any discussion on that? That's mm -hmm. the first question. Mm -hmm. And the second question is, I was very curious about, oh, I thought it was a good idea to use the heat pump system. Mm -hmm. How widely is it available and how affordable it is? Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is okay. Yeah, these yeah. are my two. Okay. okay. Well, I love geothermal power. I just love <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I think that uh, particularly Japan, should develop geothermal very much like Iceland. But um, and the reason why we you know, haven't been successful um, is I think that the, first of all, um, the geothermal potential sites, uh, of course it's volcano things, so, so uh, it's located in on same area, hot spring area. So the many people are uh, engaging in uh, uh, on same business or uh, tour business are very much afraid if we extract hot water from the from the ground, their their hot spring, uh, you know. The, the amount of the hot spring will decrease or those things. And then also these are the oven case um, located in national park. It is similar to a hydroelectric power. It's, it's, it's rather difficult to develop the, the large scale things. But recently the technology, you know, advanced and uh, Usually, he, uh, geothermal extract hot water from the ground, and using that uh, power uh, steam, rotate that uh, generator. But recently, we like like uh, like uh, uh, oil gas development. Uh, we put water in the deep in the ground, so that the water gets hot and then come back and use that power so that this in this te technology we do not uh, take any hot water from the ground so that the people in the hot spring industry or hot spring businesses do not worry about the the scarceness of the hot water so that I think what I wanted to say is that uh, is a uh, yeah, technology. So I think that uh, geothermal is, uh, I think, for, for particularly for Japan, volcano countries. And then we see that a lot of good exam example in Iceland, although the scale is very different. So it's not easy to just compare Iceland and Japan, but still use uh, geothermal very, very uh, tactically. And I think we should do that. I like I like Josamo very much. And uh, what is the next question? Uh, the uh, financial. How expensive is the uh, okay the system? Yes, yes. heat pump system, system is not expensive at all. First of all, um, <laughs> first of all, Japanese air conditioner, right? Just uh, uh, usually it's for cooling, but of course it is. It can be used for heating, and uh, oh, it's not that very expensive. And then, usually, people change air conditioner when it's broken. 
like so it's about 10 years old or 12 years old and then they change the new one and compared to the 10 years ago or 12 years ago the cop that i explained the cost coefficient of performance is dramatically uh, improved so if you just change all the air conditioner to the the newest modern one the average energy consumption electric power consumption will reduce sometimes half so and then the price is i don't know maybe 100,000 yen yeah or 500 in something like that so of course the 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 the, the higher the cop is the more, more expensive but still um even if it's it's a very not very uh, high end model japanese air conditioners cop is something like 5 6 so they produce five times energy. And then if it's the modern, newest, most expensive one, COP is seven or eight. But um, probably the one you, you are using 10 years ago, 12 years ago, it's maybe COP is two or three, something like that. So if you change it, you would save a lot of energy. Thank you. There's uh, one more question and two more questions here in the room. Uh, Stella Dixon says, thank you for your talk. It was enlightening. I have two questions, if I may. I conducted my master research last year with forestry conservationists mm -hmm. who were very keen to use Japan's forest mm -hmm. as a resource to improve self-sufficiency, mm -hmm. such as using wood for construction. Mm -hmm. Do you think forests and wood have a place in Japan's energy transition as well as to improve self-sufficiency? Yeah. That's one question. And the other question is, Alongside the change in views on nuclear power in Japan, do you see a broader shift in public perspectives on climate change, especially after the extremely hot summer this year? E.g., are people more aware, more willing to change their behaviors, etc.? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it says afforestation. So it's it, uh, and then bio, biomass energy are the, the examples of the uh, utilize uh, forest, and then you know it's a very important part to to they observe a lot of CO two, so that uh, forest afforestation is very important, and I, I totally agree with that. But it's not; it takes time, you know, to plant the the trees, and so of course we have to do that, you know. But it's I, I I wouldn't expect very quick mm. result. So, but of course we have to keep not planting a lot of trees. That's 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 one thing. And the other thing is uh, the next question is uh, the change of the, the uh, mind. Yes, yeah, so uh, over yeah. summer uh, yeah, climate summer. change again. Yes, yes. Uh, media keeps talking. Uh, whatever the, the extreme weather uh, we experience, this is from global warming, so that uh, people are very much aware, if it's true or not, but the people are very much worried about um, those very severe weather, you know, storms and, um, you know, the flood. And so, um, yeah. I'm not saying that uh, um, unless the, there is a, a, you know, those extreme weather, people wouldn't change their mind. But uh, yeah, that that definitely push uh, people to think about uh, global warming uh, through their daily lives. So yeah, it, 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 I think it helps. Hmm. Thank you. There is a question here. Uh, thank you for amazing presentation. Uh, I am impressed about their heat pump system. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell me their biggest problem for uh, spreading uh, the systems and uh, 
there are there differences are by our areas or something. What's the problem? Say it again, please. Uh, or they're spreading the system. I uh, mean, promotion of the yeah. system. Uh, in Japan, it's very, very popular. And I don't know the people understand the mechanism of heat pumps, but they use heat pumps because it, it's so popular and then available. If you go to the, the, the electric, electric appliance shop, and then you can buy you know, a lot of air conditioners and then the heat pump, a hot water system is, is, is also available. So a bit expensive, so, but, but it's, 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 uh, as far as Japan is concerned, uh, heat pump is just popular. And then, but uh, as I said, that even in Europe or in the United States, heat pump technology, uh, you know, becoming, a, 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 you know, have a lot of attention recently. So it's probably because that the uh, global warming issue pushed uh, these trends. And then sometimes, for example, when I when I gave a talk at Stanford University, at a very nice uh, hall, big big building, and then the people introduced me and, and showed that uh, room in the hall, big hall where I gave a talk, and then he proudly said that uh, this building is using heat pump system three years ago. And then I thought it, it's every every building in Japan are using heat pump systems from 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 maybe 20, 30 years ago. So I was very much surprised that the uh, heat pump system is very new to 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 Europe, but it's it's California, right? And then even in, in Europe, it's becoming very, very much as I as I explained. So Please keep eye, keep your eye on uh, heat pump system. It will be a big hit, definitely. So a bit expensive, but um, uh, yes, yes. And then I heard that uh, in not I don't know in 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 UK, but uh, in Eastern Europe, they are using the the central heating system which means that they as, as as somebody said that they do not uh heat uh just one room they heat entire community and there is a huge uh boiler and tank and then produce uh hot water there and then it's rotate in the community, and then heat up at the, uh, inside their houses. So the, the Daikin replace that boiler by heat pump system, and then use that tank as it is, mm -hmm. and produce hot water by heat pumps, not by boiler. So, so I think that the, um, I think it's, it's it's rather easy to convert from conventional uh, hot water making or heating system used in Europe to to convert it to to heat pumps. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you, amazing presentation. The question about the mentioned like uh, about the power plant, uh, the deep sea. You mentioned at the first time that uh, I mean wind power. Oh, no, no, wind power. Uh, yeah, wind power in the yeah, floating. Oh, yeah, floating. Okay, yeah, wind power. Yeah. So I have one question that the what which is the uh the relationships between uh power plant system and the uh the fishing industry. Yeah. Yeah. So I I saw the news last yeah. Summer, uh, one of the company we found the power plant in Japanese Sea, but there were, there were some several problems with yeah. fishing industry or yeah. person. And, uh, what do you think about this? Yeah. Field? Yes, good point. 
it's it's a very big problem and um it's like a like a hot hot spring industry so um fishery fishermen uh not very much uh favorable and whatever that the they um we you we pro we build something on, on you know near sea uh fishermen unions are the big big program so again that the uh, uh, offshore wind power uh, particularly in Japan have that kind of the problem very much so it it costs we have to compensate uh, something so uh, yes it, it's a big problem as you saw that the TV news or something it is a big problem it's not easy. Thank you. Any more questions in the room? There is one more question online uh -huh. here. Um, is it, do you think it's unfair to group single person transit, private cars and public transport together in your emissions analysis? Since public transport can move many more people more efficiently. Uh -huh. Do you think the move shouldn't be towards electric cars, but public transport electrified? I really enjoyed the lecture. Thank you. Yes, yes, it's true. But um, usually, train is electrified. Mm. So, and then, as you know, that the Japanese public transportation system is so efficient and jam packed. So, it's very, very in terms of the energy saving, it's a very good system. It's not comfortable at all. But uh, anyway, so so I think it it is true. It's true. And then so Japan is a yeah, typical example, but still there are a lot of cars, a lot of automobiles. And then, and so we have to convert that to, to uh, electric vehicles as much as possible. Yes, it's true. Right. Well, thank you very much. Um, it is time. Uh, there's another event uh, after us, um, apparently. Please join me in thanking our speaker tonight. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. And do join us next week uh, for a slightly different topic uh, where we move to literature. We haven't had a talk on literature in a long time. Uh, Dr. Nozomi Uematsu will speak about care and labor in Emiyagi's Diary of a Void. Same place, same time next week. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.